Hello everyone, this is Bradley. This is a short tutorial where I will be talking about this volume displacement clouds in geometry nodes. You can download this tutorial file and the demo file for free from the link in the description. This entire setup is very simple and you could actually achieve it before 5.0. But there are some important aspects I have to discuss about different workflows and the limitations before and after 5.0. Here we are in this uh, starting tutorial file. You can download it and we can follow together or you can just watch. The general idea is very simple. You have these empties in a collection. You can also duplicate this uh, empty and place it wherever you want, trying to play around with this setup. You import that collection into geometry nodes and the uh, instance spheres based on empty scales. Finally, you convert these meshes into volume. It's important to note, you can also use other shapes of geometry, such as a bigger cube, but obviously the UV sphere is the most classical one. The real problem comes with the volume displacement modifier to make it more like a cloud. Usually, if you start with a plane holding the same geometry node tree, you will not find the volume displaced modifier. You can only find this modifier on a volume object with this type of icon. To add it, you can shift A to find the volume, and we can just use this empty volume object. Then you can try to search and add the volume displaced modifier. Although your object has empty volume with nothing in the viewport, you can add a geometry node modifier and locate it with our previous node tree, making our clouds. As for the usage of this volume displace modifier, it's very simple. You need an image texture. It's using the older image texture system. You need to go to this texture tab and change the custom image texture to some other texture. This sounds like a joke, but it really works. And of course, you can switch to other ones you like. If you increase the strength to a high amount, you will find your displacement is going in a diagonal direction. This is because our texture is black and white, and you can fix it by changing grayscale color into color. So you have displacement at all dimensions. And you can scale your texture mapping however you want. To make it bigger, to make it smaller, and so on and so forth. Then this setup is done, and this is doable before 5.0. Let's talk about some downsides. First, it only works for volume objects. Second, the texture node is an old system and it has its own data panel. This means if you want to have multiple kinds of displacements of your clouds, you may need to duplicate your texture and have different kind of objects swap to each noise texture you like. And you may need to remember to tick this shield icon. Otherwise, these textures, if not used by other geometry, will be deleted. Therefore, if you only worry about how to make it work, then you are free to leave. The rest of the tutorial is rather to talk about something I recommend you not to do. Given the downsides we just mentioned, for convenience, people may have thought about using volume grid in 5.0. So let's switch to Node Tree 01 prototype where I've made part of a node tree mimicking the volume displace modifier using the volume grid system in 5.0, as you see from this mesh to density grid. The good part is very obvious. It works for any kind of object holding the node tree. So I'm having a mesh, but it's giving a volume. You have a procedural texture that can be controlled in the modifier panel directly. Overall, you can put them into a geometry node asset and pull it to use. Yes, 
These are kind of correct, but I have tested yet. The test result doesn't run very well, and I will explain it to you. Here's basically the setup in this node tree. The key for volume displacement is this other vector grid. It's essentially comparable to the set position node, which you are likely more familiar with. Here, the grid is resembling the geometry and the velocity corresponds to the offset we have. We don't have selection and position here in other vector grid. I'm not going to explain too many details about this system node or setup. If you want to know more about the grid, I've made other tutorials already for it, and there will be more. This time, I'm rather going to talk about many issues with this method specific to our volume displacement. With this setup, if you look at uh, the vector mass scale of our noise texture, this is comparable to the strength of our volume displacement modifier. So let's uh, start from 1 to 15. You find it's not really expanding itself, and it seems some volume pieces disappear. We're going to displace it further, and this time, I also want you to pay attention to the modifier profiling we have. Let's bump the value from 15 to 55. Now you can see our volume becomes even less. The time cost for our modifier also goes to a heavy 600 milliseconds. Alternatively, if you look at our volume displaced modifier, you see it scales down. From 1 to 15, it exploded up. From 15 to 55, it's everywhere. You see, it just works brainlessly. This is the major issue of this entire thing. The reason for this limitation is because the volume contains bounds, as you can see from the viewport, this uh, orange line, for example. And in this specific setup, it's actually even less as all other dark areas within the orange bound don't have a volume value. So when we map our texture onto this volume, outside the boundary, we have no more noise offsets to drive the displacement. The solution is quite simple. You just need a bigger volume. So I've already prepared a bigger volume with a bigger cube hopefully to include everything. You can even turn the cube much bigger, and I'm going to replace it with the original volume for the noise texture. In fact, immediately you see some changes, and you can increase the strength of our displacement. You can see they are displaced well. The boundary is becoming much larger until finally reaching the limit as we have encountered before. This is just an example for demonstration purposes. You definitely have better, more procedural ways to make everything automatic and working nicely. The basic idea is to calculate the bounding box and make the displacement strength also affecting the bounding box drawing. However, I hope you remember this kind of limitation in such a case. And please pay careful attention to the modifier profiling which spent 92 milliseconds for the box at this size. In comparison, for volume the space, you just blindly turn up the strength. The boundary is even bigger than our geometry nodes, and yet we're at 60 milliseconds. This means the modifier can be much faster than the geometry nodes, and it seems more brainless to use without any fear. So, at the end, it's your decision and choice. Of course, I will turn this into an asset from my library. But, uh, but anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll probably see you next time. Bye-bye.